Legacy Destruction is shaping up to be a fantastic set, but I got my eye on one theme in particular, and it's not Tenpai, it's actually kind of a sleeper. Normally when we're evaluating new cards from a new set, we'll look towards Japan and see what OCG is doing, but there are some format differences. For example, Maxi is the biggest one that may dictate whether a deck is good over here versus over there. We've seen decks fly under the radar in OCG, like Unchained, that then have potential in the TCG, and I think that may happen again with one theme in Legacy Destruction. And that theme is Lightsworn. Lightsworn received a brand new wave of support to modernize it so that it can keep up with the current meta. And a bunch of these monsters are really strong. Now, while this deck can be played by itself, I think the power of these cards are isolated into a few of them, and you can play it as this very heavy engine. Now, calling it an engine in the sense of like a Diabell Star package or a horse package isn't quite right because this would contain roughly 18 to 20 cards in your deck, and it would be a dominant force in your deck building, but I wouldn't just play pure Lightsworn. I think the beauty of Lightsworn cards is how well they mesh with other archetypes, and I'll get into that as I explain what the cards do. So with this wave of support, there were five new cards. However, three of them are the real standouts here. To the two main deck monsters are the biggest of them. First up, we got Dragon and Lightsworn. We got a little baby JD here. Look how cute it is. Anyways, it is a level four light dragon and if you have a Lightsworn monster in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. Pretty easy to do. Then, if this card is special summoned, you can send one Lightsworn from your deck to the grave. If you've played Lightsworn or seen these cards ever before, which hopefully you've seen in the last 15 or so years of their existence, you can send a Wolf. Fantastic, that's a free rank 4. But if it continues, so this card is sent to the graveyard, doesn't matter where from, you can add a Dragon monster with 3000 attack and 2600 defense from your deck to your hand. So that's pretty much just the Punishment and Judgment Dragon, but... That's fine, these cards aren't terrible, though you definitely can get away without playing those cards in your deck. This is exactly what you're looking for in Extender. This summons itself for free, but a monster that summons itself just for free is equivalent to playing like Ready Fusion. It's okay. Your Extenders that are good need to do something else as well. And this does exactly that. It sends one from deck to grave and it summons another body. Now we got two bodies for one as an Extender. That is quality. While also it floats, in case you actually want to play the Judgment or Punishment Dragon cards, now we're talking in terms of a real powerful extender, uh, and there's no restrictions on this. Besides being a once per turn effect, you're not locked into light swarms, not, not locked into dragons, not locked into lights. It's very flexible. Level four is a good statting too, and dragon is fantastic statting. So we're on the right track for something powerful here. And the next new monster that's really powerful is Weiss or Vice. I don't know how you want to say it. Light Sworn Archfiend. Uh, it looks kind of like Dark World Snow, but don't, don't see the relation. Maybe lore fans can point out what that's supposed to be but anyways this one is a tuner level four fiend uh it's light as well you can place one of the lights one from your hand on top of your deck that will summon it and mill two all right that's pretty much sharon however this is directly meant to combo with unbreaking your hand when you have cards like felice or wolf in your hand so that's great and if you have those this card is again one card summon two bodies no normal summon required we're not done there because this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard you try to light someone in your grave except vice and special summon it Fantastic. Now, this one, maybe not as good as the last one, but it's still really good in the sense of it's not going to punish you for playing multiple wolves and fleece. It helps unclog those and, in fact, turn them into something that's extra powerful. Uh, and being a tuner, it sets up Synchro 8 plays and Ring 4 plays, which are fantastic, especially considering Lights 1 got a brand new level 8 Synchro we'll look at in a bit, as well as Minerva or any other non theme type cards as well. Very easily can make uh, a Lina. You can make a, a, a Best Dweller. You can make a Dugaris. Many options. But yeah, these are two fantastic support cards, and I think that's been what's lacking for Lightsworn for a while. Their spell cards, Charge and Recharge, are phenomenal. Even by modern standards, right, these cards have not been power crept. Most Rotas, by today's metrics, are probably worse than Charge and Light Brigade. This card is not once per turn, unless you mill three and search a monster. That is phenomenal. And Recharge as well. This card wanted to draw two, then mill two, is just premium spells. Like, the, these cards, if printed in other archetypes, would be very good. Imagine if Bonfire milled three as well. Like, you could easily do things with that. Imagine milling a Jet Synchron on top and your opponent just throws their hands up like, oh man, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> That's what we have here. So now that we have actual valid targets for these, you could play a Lightsworn Suite in your deck. But that's not all. There are other new cards here, and the main other one I want to look at is the brand new Synchro. It is also called Minerva, and it's Lightsworn Athena. So this level eight Synchro that is generic, uh, however, I don't think you'd use this outside of Lightsworn deck because its effect is very particular to Lightsworn. 
And that is, Lightsworn Monsters you control cannot be banished by card effects. Okay, whatever. That's just for one of the other new cards, but not important. Uh, and then he only use the following effect once per turn. Good part now. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can send Lightsworn Monsters with different types from your deck to the graveyard. Up to the number of Lightsworn Monsters used as material for this card's summon. Again, we're seeing the combo here. Felice, Wolf, and Vice. You send two, uh, obviously different types. So you want to send a Vice and like a Wolf here. Uh, and then Vice will revive something else you've synchroed away this turn. And now you've essentially summoned this card for zero bodies because you replaced the body to use immediately. But that's not all because it has another ability. You can mention the four lights will monsters from a graveyard and send that many cards from the top of your deck to the grave. So it keeps on milling as well. So by setting up level eight synchro here with the lights cards, we replace the bodies immediately. And then we get to mill a couple cards as well. So this really deck thins a lot, especially because after you this, you have another ring four set up. You could very easily do something like Minerva. Uh, and Minerva would mill three more. Any Light Sworns you mill, you draw a card as well. This is an old card, obviously, but still pretty solid. Like, by modern standards, this card is pretty good. Now, if you're not playing a gigantic Light Sworn suite, then you're not going to guarantee a ton of mills off Minerva, but that's fine. Like, the point is deck thinning. And when you see some test hands we do, you'll see how much we really go through the deck uh, in one turn. It's, it's incredible. It's very akin to the danger combos that you've seen in, like, 2018. Now, there are two other new cards that I think are okay. Uh, nothing brilliant, but they aren't super important unless you're playing a very heavy Lightsworn deck. Uh, and the first one is a new trap card, Lightsworn Aegis. And now traps, we have to be very careful with and scrutinize them a lot because they're just inherently flawed trap cards that, you know, you can't use in the first turn. I mean, they're going to suck going second, uh, especially in a deck that should already be pretty good when it goes first. And Aegis falls victim to that. So you target face-up cards, your opponent controls, up number Lightsworn monsters you control. So you can target spells, which is really cool here. Uh, and then you get their effects. So this is like hot red uh, in multiple if you need to. Uh, and then the nice part here is if it's sent from the deck to the grave, you can set it. So that's the appeal here is that when you mill this, you get a free interrupt. However, I think the absolute number of things you can do when you mill your entire deck is so high that I don't, don't want to add a bricks to my deck just for another interrupt when you probably will never need it. And then the other new card is Enlightenment Dragon. That's right. We got a fusion for JD and Punishment Dragon, uh, which can only be summoned by banishing cards from uh, one from the monster zone, one from the grave. So you summon one and mill the other, and then you banish both to summon it. Uh, and then quick effects, once per turn, you can pay 2k life points to banish every other card in both players' fields and graveyards. So this is where the Minerva Synchro would protect you from banishing your own cards. And then during the end phase, you can set the top four cards back to the graveyard. Uh, and then if it's destroyed by an opponent's card, you can bring back the JD and punishment from the banished. However, my problem with this is if you're not building a way to beat triple tactics talents, I don't want to end on this and my opponents steal it, and then they beat my field and my follow-up at the same time. That's my concern, my biggest problem with this card, on top of having to play uh, Judgment Dragon and Punishment Dragon. That being said, on top of just this core package here of Lightsworn cards, you can take a step further, right? Uh, say you wanted to play one of these dragons. Uh, you could search one of them off of the Dragon Lightsworn, uh, and then when you have the Minerva on the field, you can then special summon one of them. You can summon Punishment by Banishing Four from the Grave by his effect, or just Milling Four to have JD live, and then overlay Four a Zombie Vampire. Mill Four more and more extenders, fantastic completely fits in line with what we're trying to accomplish here with these cards. Uh, something else you can try doing is play like Lumina. Uh, and if you mill Lumina at any point, you can make a Charmer and then turn that into Selene. Selene bring back Lumina and then now you change your level landscape. What I mean here is these are all four axis cards. So you're summoning just rank fours and level eight synchros uh, if you're just using these. However, by including level threes in the mix, if you have like multiple Luminas, you can go three plus three plus four into Baron or two level threes make a rank four like Levier or like Dante. Plenty of options you can kind of explore with from there. Uh, and obviously you should have plenty of spells in your grave if you're milling a bunch. Thanks to Selene. Uh, two options I had, I, I quickly whipped up. What you could do are a Light Sworn tier deck. This one should be pretty intuitive. Tier wants the mill. Uh, and it's really nice when you get to the bottom of your deck in tier as well. Because once you get to the bottom of your deck, your mills become more impactful. Because you keep stacking the tiers back in the bottom. And by the end of the game, when you're milling like three cards, you're getting multiple tier effects in the game is just like over. Uh, and you can do some really nasty boards here, but the point is here is you just have a ton of extension, more so than the modern tier deck, and your boards are pretty much the same. You know, not an engine is going to be limited in these type of decks because they're very combo heavy, and that may hold these type of decks back at the, right now because, you know, you want hand shafts to combat Snake Eye, but that could change even by the time I post this video if there's a ban list, who knows. Uh, and I can show you what a hand may play out like with this deck, or you could play like a runic version. Because it's 1918 card type engine, you could fit in another 1819 card type engine, just like we did before. Uh, throw in a couple non-engine cards, and bam! And you got a bunch of tuners here to synchro with as well, and I see potential. You got rank four axis for like Minerva. You got synchro axis with the tuners. 
Uh, you're milling cards which fuel the runic fountain. I think you can do a lot here. Uh, and now these are both very preliminary builds meant to just show you potential concepts because it's unexplored in the OCG. And I want to give you some guidance as a starting point, but you can start exploring it afterwards. Now I'm going to do two sample hands, uh, one of each of the decks to kind of show you the potential here, just so you can visualize it and see it uh, in case my explanations hadn't done, done enough justice. All right, let's do a test hand with Lightsworn Tier Elements. For five. All right. Yeah. A good example here. We got two wolves in hand. Uh, it's not a big deal because we have ways to clear it out with Msedi. Uh, we have Vice as well. I think first thing I want to do here is I want to use this. Uh, if this gets Ash, I'm actually completely okay. It's fantastic. But I don't want to mill the uh, the Gold Sark. So I'm going to play as if there's no hand traps. Um, we get the draw here. Well, shouldn't matter. We hit. Oh. So how do you want to start here? We have plenty of options. Probably. Get, get this out of my deck because I don't want to... I'd rather... I just want deck then. I want to get those out of my deck. So mill three first. We hit that. Cool. Oh, we hit the happy. P fantastic. Uh, so let's just get the third one of these out because milling it's not good. The rest are good mills. Uh, there's no Lumen in this version. And now this triggers. It doesn't matter if it's sent uh, by card effect. It doesn't matter. It'll trigger. Uh, this won't trigger because this was a cost, not a card effect. So we don't get any tier effects here, unfortunately. The rest of the, the effects for Lightsworn aren't cost. So we will trigger them. It's just this one specifically... Technically a bit worse. Still fine. No no problem here. So let's add from deck to hand our Judgment Dragons or Punishment Dragons for not milling it later. Uh, I'm playing Punishment in this one. It's harder to summon, but it's a dark to set up Bahamut Toad plays. I'm not sure if that's correct, but just something to try. Uh, and now I'm going to use Dragon Alliance one first to send a Felice. Uh, and this, I'm going to hold this one because it's a tuner, even though they're both technically tuners. But both plays can set up a tuner plus a non-tuner pretty easily. I'm not sure actually which one is, is, is better to use. That type of optimization we can work on later. Uh, but yeah, I can synchro here and get our Minerva out. And then I get to send two from deck to grave again. So I'm going to send different types. I'll send a... Uh, that doesn't matter. Wolf and Vice. Those come out. Uh, then Vice will revive one. And I'm not going to synchro here, but I'll bring back a tuner anyways. Uh, and then I make Minerva. I think maybe because I could have made the, uh, the this Minerva twice, I should have made the other Minerva first. Because I just emptied my deck of Lightsworn for no reason, and I, I I get less draws now. But, you know, I don't think it matters much. I to mill three. I milled the Lightsworn. Nice draw. Uh, okay, I don't have a tier, so this doesn't do anything. But this comes back still. I can banish four Lightsworns from the grave. I want four different names, though. Do I have four names? I do. So I can banish one, two, three, four. So now... Uh, this is live. I can mill four cards. Uh, I need to mill a tier here, right? That'd be nice. Nope, no tier. That's okay. Uh, I still have so much more milling I could do. And I can special this out. And I can overlay this for some vampire. Uh, there we go. At the attach with the dark in the grave, we mill four cards. Now, obviously, you could mill something off their deck that could be helpful for you. But either way, mill four. Um, whew, still no tears. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm only one target to revive, so we'll revive this. Uh, but that's okay. So where do we want to go from here? Um, I want to make an Appaloosa. Do I do that now or do I wait? So I'm never going to need these levels anymore. Uh, level eight, so I can just use them as link material. I'm going to bring back Msetti here, and then I think I will keep up one of the tuners. And then just make a Palooza for four. Um, yeah, four interrupts or my my four negates there, which I mean four negates. Uh, I get I get that it's a contentious calling of four negates. Uh, and then I can use my vice here in hand, so I can special summon it. Uh, and then put this on top of my deck, and I'm L two. There's Rhino Heart, which I can't use again. Uh, bring this back. Uh, and then where do I go from here? I didn't mill Sulik. I didn't mill any tier cards. Besides that, honestly, not expected. This is where obviously Kit is broken because you could go Murley for sure with Sprint, but we are not playing Mash to Duel. So not an option. Uh, we can still use Happy, of course, and just make more Link monsters. So I think, unfortunately, we just never saw a tier. This is where Dugaris would be pretty good. 
All right, this is where I still need to work on the extra deck a bit more. Like, say I don't play, uh, it's so hard. Say I, never, I don't want Omega. Say Omega never comes up. Uh, and maybe it doesn't, right? Because this is random. Let's normal summon this because I don't want this anymore. Uh, and then I can overlay for uh, Dugaris. Let's call this Dugaris. Uh, and then Dugaris can detach two materials to revive one from Grave. So it's detached to put the Shuffler in Graves. That's an interrupt as well. Uh, and then we can summon this. And we want to send a Tear from to Grave that's not Merly because we want to use that later. Uh, so send this. See all my tier cards in deck. Uh, quite extraordinary that I hadn't seen them yet, but it's fine. Uh, what do I want to put back? Probably just this because I can search it again with this on the next turn. Uh, and it could be a, a cool body to have and to shuffle stuff back. I uh, get the Mud Dragon out. And then I can make Bahamut Shark. Get the Toad here. So that Toad is going to be good because the Toad is going to be an interrupt. But it's also going to add back the uh, the tier cash tier, which lets me mill three more cards. And there's an argument to wanting to do that now and then remake Bahamut Toad. Is that possible? Uh, if I shuffle back to make the Pelia and then Mud again, I, I could. I have to use the Shuffler. If I use the Shuffler, I could remake this and mill three more and try to set up a bigger, a bigger board with the Sulik. Um, but I'm not going to try to do that. I think that's uh, risky. Here I could do something simple. I could just go like make Dweller and then link these into IP, which could be interrupt later. And what's cool here is I can actually end on Happy because uh, I haven't used Happy yet. And then Happy has a, has a cool effect where uh, if another card you control leaves the field by an opponent's card, while this card is in the monster zone, I can target two cards that are banished or in either grave and add them to either the hand or the deck. So I can add back whatever I want. Uh, and this could be adding back tier cash as well. It could be a spell even. I could shuffle back cards from their grave. But yeah, this is like kind of hard for them to deal with. Uh, and then obviously I can link these cards away into SP or into Sprint, uh, or I could link now even, but I probably don't see the need to. But yeah, this is like a solid field. Uh, the main point I want to get across here is like, this was an unfortunate mill, to be honest, because I mill no tiers. I pretty much wasn't playing tier. Is you can turbo through your deck. And when you can turbo through your deck like this, like in a danger deck, you can do so much. Like what if you play Arc Lord Christia and you just mill through your deck and then you revive it with the Garrus? Or you play a anti-spell fragrance or summon limit and then you uh, summon Nightmare Griffin to reset it. You have so many options in terms of power level here that it's... Honestly, a bit concerning. I wouldn't want to play against this in a tournament. Uh, even though it's fun to play play with, playing against it is kind of a lot to deal with. And this is just like a basic no floodgate type version. You definitely can go further. Anyways, let's look at what a runic can do. It, it's, it should be the same. You'll see that we can turbo through our deck at an alarming pace. Look through our hand. Uh, phew, this hand is insane, right? But I think I want to start here with this because if I mill a fountain, I can go Gary to add it back. So I'm going to put this on top of my deck. Uh, and a special summon and mill two. And milling mill and spell is also good. Yep, fine. Uh, bring this back. Uh, and I'm going to actually just make Minerva XYZ here. I'm not going to do it last time. I want to try to draw cards with Minerva. Uh, and if I don't, that's fine. Detach mill three. Now, I did use two tuners to do this, so maybe this was a mistake, but we'll see. Uh, mill three cards, nothing, but I milled a bunch of runics. Okay. Uh, let's get the, uh, the fountain. Uh, they banish a card. I fountain. And then if I want, what, what do I want? I'm going to go Gary, I think here, so I can have a four access plays online. I think that's what I want to do. Or is it Hugan for 10 access? Maybe it's Hugan. I'd like to have another card in hand to, uh, to discard to add another fountain, but... I think I'd rather just guarantee this for more plays. I think I get to draw three cards. Um, fantastic. Draw three. Two, three. Uh, ooh, so I have a normal somebody else. This could be pretty good, but honestly, I'd probably just recharge draw. I uh, just keep going through my deck. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Just, okay, so this only triggers off monster effects, unfortunately. So Felice will not come back off of uh, off of charge or recharge. Um, but I mean, I still I cycled bodies and paid nothing for it. So fantastic. Mill two. Nice. That's a tuner we can normal summon uh, later. Um, and then I I, okay, I didn't get rid of all my fleeces. That was a bit of a scare for a second because then I wouldn't have had no tuner to commit. 
off this. Uh, and then I can synchro these into the uh, this Minerva. And then I can mill, t mill two more so I can send another wolf. And I can send this. And the, the good part here is after you're thinning through your deck, your deck is all runic spells. So your runics are just going to be insane. Uh, like you're going to be drawing three, 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 all runic spells. Like how the hell did they ever recover from this? Uh, anyways, this is going to revive. Then I can revive. Uh, this one's playing a raid. And this one's one more normal tunable tuner. Uh, this is better than reviving a fleece because I milled two. Um, I can mill two here. Neat. Uh, cool. A milling another fountain would be nice because then I can uh, uh, keep extending. I think I already used destruction, right? I used destruction. I used tip. So I actually can't uh, recycle fountain again. Not that I need to. Like Honestly, holding these disruptions should be fine because I can synchro here. Coral dragon. And then I can synchro for Baron. I have a Baron now. Cool. A draw. So now we want to banish for the, to mill four here. I want to mention tuner so I can res resolve this Potter. Um, so let's banish. I mean, it doesn't matter what I banish. Right? Just as long as I have one tuner. Um, I have to mill four cards here. If we can mill Gary, that'd be nice. Not Gary. Mill Fountain. Nope. A bunch of running spells. How many running spells are in my grave? I have... One, two, three, four, five. Yes. I mean, I'll be drawing like the next three times. I'll be drawing like three cards. And by that game, at that point, the game's over. Uh, anyways, um, I'm going to special summon uh, Vice here. Uh, and then I can synchro these two. Not oh, special summon, normal summon. I'm going to normal summon it. Uh, special summon and make Crimson Dragon. And then I can Crimson Dragon target here on the floor, tag out, and get. Um, where is this Potter? Here we go. It's another interrupt. And this Potter can revive. Uh, now, again, if you play like Lumina, you can do Lumina combos, but so I'll just bring this back. Uh, and then I can synchro for Omega. Uh, or I can make Dweller. Or I can make Emerald and draw a card. Like, someone's going to draw again to try and extend my Runic plays. And then, and then a Link Monster. Like maybe one thing on IP with an SP line. I could do that as well. Like, say I made Emerald. Instead, that could be cool because then I have a I can shuffle back some of my runic cards as well. Uh, and this could be good if I'm trying to mill as well. Also, gonna play the punishment dragon or judgment dragon in this deck as well and gone for a zombie vampire player here, but the mill's not as important. So, I want to put back uh, this, this for later, uh, and say I want to put back a Felice. Well, I shouldn't have banished them, but whatever. i put back a vice. To mill with uh, this next turn. Now I have one card synchro eight play or rank four. Shuffle, draw a card, uh, hit a fountain. All right, cool. Play fountain. Uh, play this one that I haven't used yet. Go Gary. Add back fountain. Draw three. One, two, three. And like you can see how, the extent that I'm going through my deck. Like I could keep on going. I could slumber bench top three cards. Uh, and then one, two, three. One, two, three. There you go. I'm ending with like so much. Uh, I think I have a vice medic I can mill for. Uh, if I mill it, it's whatever. And like with both of these decks, when you get to this controlled game state where your deck is just full of spells, you just obliterate them. Uh, like maybe you play golden one golden droplet, like one of the hammer or whatever. It's just the name, so you can cycle through them like extremely fast on your first turn. To get to this point, they deck out extremely fast because uh, you're banishing cards from their deck as well. This is live, by the way, is a negate, uh, which is cool to know, not just the pop by, by your cards. And then you have more synchro plays in the next turn as well. Like you're not just trying to deck them out, you know, even though like that strategy is fully fine. Uh, and then you could turn this into like Utopic Draco Future here, or you could make IPSP. Options are there. That's the point. And again, look how look at the deck size. Look at how many cards you turn through in this deck. It's insane. Anyways, yeah, that brings me to the end of my Lightsworn ramblings, I guess. I may be a senile old man telling you guys, oh, Lightsworns are meta again. Because this was actually my first meta deck from back in the day. But I really see potential in these cards. This is like the definition of good quality extenders. And you have broken spells. Uh, and something that I actually haven't talked about yet is Felice, if you mill it, is actually really good. Because it has a bonus effect, not just uh, when it's milled summon itself, but that is uh, you contribute it to target the monster controls, pop it, and then mill three cards. So you continue milling and you got pops. 
So you don't have to just threaten them via link monsters. When you're trying to break a board and you go like, Lightsworn Dragon to send this, revive it. That's like real pressure. And Vice Surviving Felice is like also really pressuring their monsters. Like they're not safe from removal. I, it's actually really solid. While this may falter in the immediate sense or in a hand trap format where uh, Snake Eye is uh, really good and this deck may struggle going second against that because that turn one is insane. This has potential. If not now, I think at some point Lightsworn will be a really cool option. And I'm excited to see if you have any ideas, any decks you want to mix Lightsworn with, this, this type of engine with one or two extra cards. If there's any one card you want to add or two cards to set up some really powerful end boards that you try and turbo your deck to uh, to resolve. For me, if Fairy Tale Snow is legal, oh man, you guys know I'd be abusing that. And I can't wait for the day these cards come out in Master Duel because you can absolutely guarantee that's what I'll be jamming. That's all for now, guys. See you all next time.